Hi, I'm Christina Applegate. And I'm Jamie Lynn Sigler. And this is Messy. This episode is with Jimmy Kimmel. That's right. We're going to talk about mean tweets, things he still wants to accomplish, being honest, obviously, and talking from his heart. I think we should do our own mean tweets. Oh, gosh. Let's find some mean tweets. looking for some. Yeah. Throw them at us, guys. Let's see how, let's see how strong we are now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to it. Enjoy. Hi, guys. <gasps> Jimmy. How's it going? Oh, my God. You have such a professional microphone and headphones. Oh, yes. I'm, uh, you know, you're not dealing with some rank amateur here. I got the whole deal. <laughs> I'm like in bed. I don't know where Jamie is, but <laughs> I'm on a couch. Um, no, we're on the couch. Right now. <laughs> okay. So everyone tonight we have, or today, whenever you're listening to this or who cares if you're on the toilet or if you're in bed, um, there's someone that I want to introduce who is such an incredible human being um, who has brought us through many times of this planet of weird uh, elections through personal things, through political things, through just the most funny. Um, a person I did a video with called I'm fucking Ben Affleck many years ago, the incomparable, the funny, the hilarious, the sweet, the endearing best friend of Shaq's Jimmy Kimmel. So welcome. <laughs> wow, to what a ni- that might be the nicest introduction I've ever received. <laughs> I don't feel like I deserve at least 80% of it, but uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm happy to be here with you guys. We're so happy to have you. So happy to have you. We were saying before you came on <laughs> that your show was just, you know, when you do the rounds of press as like an actor, there are certain shows that you really look forward to to do because you just find that you enjoy speaking to that person and your show is just that like you just you leave feeling really supported and you had a great conversation anytime I was on you made me laugh and feel great and just appreciate that because I think it's it's clear to an audience but it's important for them to know like as, as actors too we feel that we feel that just as much that is very very nice of you to say and I I loved having both of you guys on and it's you know, it's interesting because some people are very nervous. I actually get really nervous before doing a talk show because it's such a tight interview. It's like a seven or eight minutes and then maybe another four minutes or something like that. And you, sometimes it's hard to get going, you know, and I think that's why these podcasts are it's fun to do because you can speak um, extensively. Really, you can just keep talking until people uh, throw their phone into the pool. But uh, I I, uh, I appreciate that. And I like being on the other side of it now here. Oh, good. I was going to say a lot of people I don't think realize, and we're, you know, I'm talking, I'm speaking to our choir right here, but I think a lot of people that might be listening don't realize that when you do a talk show, you're given, like, you have to do a pre-interview and then you're kind of like feeling like you have to be stuck to this formula. And there are talk show hosts who like, literally can't go off of that. Like if you're not answering it the way that you answered it with the producer on the phone, then they can't go with it. And I, I think that every time I've been on your show, which I don't know how many times it's been, but quite a few, we, I don't think we ever even get to the questions because those are the best interviews for me because you listen, you listen, you fucking listen, man. And I can see it in your eyes that you're listening. And that's when a dialogue, like the most exciting shit happens. So I look at those pre-interviews that they do as like kind of a life raft. If, if sometimes, cause sometimes people aren't great at doing a talk show. So we always have that to go to if we need to. And if certainly if there's something that you really, really want to get to, you do get to the, that thing. But I think that for me, the best interviews are the ones where you discuss nothing that was on the card. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Oh yeah, that was a real, cause that becomes a real conversation then. Those are the ones that get like millions of views because those are the ones where you're like, oh my God, this is such an amazing, cool moment. And I just hope that you feel that way because for Thank me you, being I... an interviewee, that's been the most fun is like you and Conan and, you know, like you guys don't give a shit. Like we just go, go wherever you want to go. You're so smart. 
Well, that's very nice. And I appreciate being compared to Conan. And I will say that I have been in a situation on talk shows where they got mad at me for forgetting some predetermined detail. They're like, why didn't you talk about the, I was like, I don't know. I was in the, I was talking. I was in the conversation. I, I just forgot it. <laughs> like it was just a really weird thing. It's like becomes acting. Sometimes it becomes like this, like script and it's, it is weird to stick to that. Some people like it though. You know, there's some comedians that have material they want to do and they want you to set them up in a certain way, but it's always more fun when it just rolls. Oh, yeah. You, you, I watched the interview the other day with you and Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder. And I that feel was like a I fun mean, one. that one has just been rolling. I mean, I, did you ha- had to have no idea what was coming at you? You'd be surprised. That one actually had a really good idea because oh, we had, yeah, we had to get to certain things. There were certain bits that we had to get to. And, um, and actually, yeah, that was one that was pretty well thought out. And we just tried to make it seem as loose as possible. You all did a very good job. I was (laughs) (laughs) cool. Well, Emma's a pretty darn good actor. uh, So, uh, you know, her in the middle made it easy. And Nathan's a good actor too. I don't know if you guys ever watched that show, but it's really, really good. Help me out. I I started the first episode and maybe it's just because normally my bedtime is like 9 p.m. and I'm an old lady, but like I, I, I... I'm trying to understand it. I'm in the I, I'm in the pilot, and I'm like, am I missing something, or do I have to hang in there and watch more? You think you have to hang in there, but also you have to enjoy discomfort. I think too, okay. and, which I do. I love it. You know, I I love those uncomfortable moments, and I think yeah. that the whole show, the whole series, is one long uncomfortable moment. <laughs> I'm I'm such a weird. Since I've been sick, I only watch reality television, so I haven't seen a scripted show in what, two and a half years now? Interesting. So why do you think that is, Christina? Because act, I'm going to look, I'm just going to say it. Act, actors bother me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tell like, me act, more. Like acting bothers me. Like I, I watch and then I'm like, oh, you're acting. So I don't want to watch that. I want to watch like crazy people who are real. And then it makes me feel better about my life for some reason. I don't know. I just. Well, because you're witnessing trauma at a very safe distance. Yes. Huh. And then no one's That's- like, no one's like talking with ellipses after it, you know, like yeah. just when I can feel like the acting, I get really freaked out, which is terrible because I, I am an actor, was an actor, whatever the heck it is. But yeah, I've it becomes gotten- work. You're watching work. And I remember doing a, a commercial and I'd never done a commercial before. And after doing that commercial and knowing that that 30 second commercial took like 14 hours and and they were yelling at the extras in the background and they were putting spraying um, uh, water on the Bud Light can. It became this like whole thing. It kind of ruined commercials for me for a long time. <laughs> I was, oh, they always just seemed like, oh, my God, that must have taken forever to get that that <laughs> little that shot. I just started thinking about the effort that went into it and and it, it did it spoiled the experience. Yeah, I guess I when I see someone being self-aware, I get. I get uncomfortable, but I mean, I love like, you know, only murders in the building. Like I'm waiting to do the third season because my daughter won't let me watch it without her. Uh (laughs) But right now we're on um, claim to fame, which is like a weird show that I'd never seen before, but that's like what she wants to watch. So this is what that's the one with the celebrity siblings uh, on the show. Yeah. Or cousins or what? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I live in. Do they, do they do something? Do they like, what do they do so that you have to guess? Jamie, to I it? don't. You have to just figure out, like, hang out. You just everyone's watch trying them? to figure out who they're related to. Are they all in a house together? Yeah. Is it's, it a it's, competition? It's, yeah, they win money. Oh. Anyway, that's that. Right now, I'm on Shaws of Sunset, so that's kind of where I'm at. Jimmy, I know you've lost all fucking respect for me. No, I like that really? stuff. I I don't. Um, you know, I don't really have the time to get involved in that kind of thing, but. I have had situations in my life. My daughter, my oldest daughter is 32. And, um, Wait, and what? She, my oldest daughter is 32 years old. And that was not she in your got, bio. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she got me involved in a couple of those. So one night she came over and we watched like 13 episodes of My Big Fat Gypsy Wedding, I think, in a row. Oh, and certain shows that and I will watch with, with her. But um, generally we don't. We don't. But uh, The Bachelor does come on from time to time. And. Uh, sometimes that's interesting, but not usually. Well, you probably have to do that for work. 
The Bachelor, right? Well, yeah, I used to really pay attention to what was going on on The Bachelor for work. And now it's kind of, they, they show me clips the next day and I figure out what I need to. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, one of the other things I really love and appreciate about you is I think you really like encouraged actors to laugh at themselves. Like one of my favorite segments was when you would have actors read mean tweets about themselves. Oh, that's the best. Isn't that the best? Because it's really important to have a sense of humor about this shit. That was my wife's idea, actually. It was? What? Yeah. We had a wow. mutual friend who was visiting us and she was very popular on Twitter and she was really down because people were saying mean things to her. And I was, I just said, Oh, that's nothing. You want to hear some, you want to hear some mean things. And I started reading some things that people said about me and my wife was like, Oh, this is like a, this could be a thing on the show. We should have actors read the meanest tweets about them. And then we expanded it to football players and politicians, et cetera. But it is funny. It is funny how some of the people react to it. Like Obama did mean tweets once. And I remember, yeah, we dug up a bunch of tweets and there were a lot of really mean ones and his people whittled some of the harsher tweets out. And then finally it gets to him and he sits down and he scans through it first and he goes, Oh, there's a lot meaner tweets out there than this. So don't you guys have any meaner tweets? And we we're like kind of looking at his people <laughs> like, uh, yeah, we did have some meaner yeah. tweets and they're looking at us like, you better not say anything. <laughs> and, uh, and he wanted a meaner, but some people do get their feelings hurt when they look through the, the list of tweets and they go like, Oh, Oh, it's, it's, it's really kind of interesting. I, I did. I think I did a couple of them and it, that was always my favorite thing that you would ask, like had me do them because it made me laugh so hard that, you know, the whole thing of people just sitting at home, just judging you, you know, based on like, what the fuck is their life? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. you know, it's just, it's so ridiculous, but thank you for doing that because it really put light on, on kind of cyber bullying basically is yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. And I think a lot of those people specifically realized that, oh, maybe that wasn't such a great thing to do after they did it. <laughs> but then we started to focus on, on the tweets, the mean tweets that actually were kind of funny, and, you know, and some of them were really funny. And there is something to that. But we've kind of abandoned mean tweets because Twitter has become, I think, um, a cesspool in many yes. ways. And so we yeah. haven't really done that in a long time. And I guess they're not even called tweets anymore. There's really nothing... Um, fun about mean exes. I don't even know. Um, what, I don't even know. You know that. Okay. So, you know, Jimmy and I have become friends on Twitter because we, we private message each other, but now we have each other's phone number. So yes. that's nice. Is that, it, did it, is that how it was this, the evolution of the relationship, like yeah. guests on the show, then the little DMS and now you have the number. We slipped into each other's DMS, but that's not right. in the way that, that you want to hear it, but just kind of, <laughs> like talking to each other. And then I was like, just call me. And then he's like, just call me. And then he sent me pizza and food. And just recently, which was like the kindest, most generous thing ever, even though you said on the thing, I'm Marty's favorite, which is just that. Will we be did have an favorite. argument about who was Marty Short's favorite. You, you, you volunteered to me that you were his favorite person. And I said, Oh, I don't know. And then we got him in the middle of it and he was uncharacteristically, uh, he's kind of, <laughs> Did you notice he like he didn't really engage in it when no, I copied him on our yeah he didn't make a pick and um he didn't seem to want any part of it actually well I was he, kind of surprised he privately texted me that I'm totally his favorite oh no, he privately kidding. texted me that too I just didn't want to say it yeah I know <laughs> our competition <laughs> will go on forever with that um, one laughing, of us will win well. his heart ultimately yes. <laughs> You know, you've done like so much in your career, you now hosting Oscars multiple times. Is there anything in your life in this business or outside of this business that you still want to accomplish or still think about wanting like some goal to achieve? Yeah, there are things. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist. That was really my plan for my life. And so I do feel like I abandoned that along the way and I don't have a lot of time for it. My daughter is actually an artist, which is satisfying to me and makes wow. me feel like like something came out, out of that. But I do, I did, I illustrated and wrote a children's book and I do have an idea for like a illustrated graphic novel that I want to 
write and draw, but I just never really seem to have the the time to get it done. And uh, that's something that I think about probably every day and wish I could bring myself to finish it. But um, there's that's just too really much cool. stuff to do. You have little kids. You can't accomplish. You do a lot for somebody who has small children. It's I hard. find all sorts of excuses. But yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> a show like mine is you can just never work on it enough. It's just a you know, it's, it's at the end of the night, it's over and you have to start again and you yeah. can really never put everything into it. It's just an endless, it's like a, uh, an all you can eat buffet and you just have to keep refilling it over and over again. And, um, I, you know, I have this, I was a radio disc jockey for 12 years before I started this. So I've been doing this kind of thing for a very long time. And it's just in my head that you just like, you need material, you need material, you need stuff to talk about. You need to keep burning through fuel. And um, I'm always thinking about that. Even when I'm watching TV or I'm reading news on the internet or whatever, I'm always thinking like, how can I convert this into uh, television material? This episode of Messy is brought to you by Maybelline. For over a century, Maybelline has provided accessible makeup to give everyone the self-confidence to express themselves. I don't know about you, but that was the first makeup I ever bought for myself was Maybelline. Oh, heck yeah. Maybelline. And I don't, as the I don't number know why. One, is that the song? I, Maybelline. Is, something like Maybelline. that. But as the number one, think about this, number one makeup brand in the world, Maybelline has the platform and the power to make an impact from the inside out. How about that? Using it for good, buds. That's why they created Brave Together, an initiative designed to help those facing anxiety and depression by funding free professional one-on-one -on -one support so that no one has to struggle alone. You know, that's what we here at Messy are all about. Mental health challenges like anxiety or depression can be so difficult to manage on your own. We have talked extensively, the two of us, about the years that we have battled ourselves thinking that we needed to do that and that is not the case for us and should not be the case for anyone anymore so maybelline new york created the brave talk training which helps people navigate mental health conversations with their friends and they use the acronym brave for be present right setting ask questions validate feelings and encourage action because guess what it's brave to ask for help so let's be brave together maybelline by the way is committed to donating 10 million dollars to ngo partners and providing free access to one-on-one -on -one professional support to 3 million people by 2025 so that no one has to struggle alone so if you or someone you know is experiencing anxiety or depression, Maybelline New York is funding free confidential support. Text TOGETHER to 741-741 or visit Maybelline.com slash Brave Together to learn more. Because we all need someone with us on this journey. And I am so grateful that I have Jamie Lynn Siegler. Forever. And that we have this, that we're here with you and Maybelline is with you as well. Thank you, Maybelline, so much for what you're doing for mm -hmm. all of us who struggle with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, and just the daily messy grind of life. Hi, this is Christina Aniston, uh, joined by my dear friend, Jamie Lynn Aniston. Oh, sorry, there's only one Aniston, and that's Jennifer oh. Aniston and her incredible company called Lola V. That's right, this this episode of Messy is brought to you by Lola V. It's an award-winning hair care line founded by our sister, Jennifer Aniston. Mm -hmm. You know, her hair is pretty iconic. So I think if we're going to trust hair stuff, I'd trust it from Jennifer Aniston, wouldn't you? Like, it freaks me out that her hair has always been pretty glorious. And I'm not talking about the Rachel cut. I'm talking about its shine, its shimmer, mm -hmm. its thick, its glorious. That's right. I think I've touched it before. Wow, I'm so jealous. I was on Friends. Oh, that's right. Well, also, let's talk about the low levy ingredients, you guys. It's oh, yeah. all naturally derived, plant-based goodness, no silicones, no sulfates, parabens, gluten, and of course, it's cruelty-free and vegan, which we know Christina loves. I'm, I'm a big vegan. That's right. There's I've decided to say everything weird now. Vegan, oh, terras, and vineyard. Those are my new things. What's a terras? A terrace. 
A terrace. I see. They have the in-shower trio with the restorative shampoo and conditioner plus intensive repair treatments. So you get to turn your shower into a spa-like experience. And then post-shower on your terrace, you can use the glossing detangler, the perfecting leave-in. Or I love their lightweight hair oil because it is, in fact, lightweight and gives me just enough of that like moisture, helps my fry flyaways and gives me that Jennifer Aniston shine. And if you're like me, who's been dyeing her hair since she was 13 years old and I get out of the shower and it's straw, it's literal straw, you put this hair oil on, you're Jennifer Aniston. So unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lolavie.com. And as our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order. When 15 you use guys, code- 15%. That's a lot of percentage. Mm-hmm. When you use code messy at checkout, take it away, Christina. I mean... If you're talking hair care advice, why listen to anyone besides the woman that gave us the Rachel? That's Christian. 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E.com with promo code MESSY. And please note, you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. So after you purchase, I'll ask you where you heard about them and just please support our show and tell them you got them from your messy girls. Yep. I was going to say this, but that, you know, about that, your um, opening monologues over the last, I mean, I don't, however many years you've been doing the show. So sorry, I didn't, I didn't. 20, that almost 21. Almost It'll 20, be 21. It was like 20 something years. Yeah. Wow. You, when shit has been going on in the world and shit has been going on in your own life and you are the, I think the only I talk show host who takes time to talk from your heart. And that is something that has not gone unnoticed by any of us um, and has moved all of us. And, you know, we don't have to get into details, but just to watch you be, I'm sorry, I cuss a lot, by the way, just to be so fucking honest, whether (laughs) it be about your family, whether it be about the state of the world, whether it be about healthcare, whether it be about the elections and that dumb fuck and all the other stuff that we've all had to sit and witness um, your honesty and your integrity and your heart is something so beautiful and it makes us all feel safe. Like when I've yeah. watched you go through stuff, I feel safe. So it's, I just want to thank you for that. And I want to oh. echo that too. It's so true, Jimmy. Like there have been really poignant moments that you have really selflessly, beautifully shared that is very healing for a lot of people. You know, I think it's a lot of what Christina and I are aiming to do in this space with this podcast as well is, you know, being vulnerable about hard things um, can feel confusing of uh, that it could do anything for anybody, but it truly, it allows people to feel like they can share as well. It allows people to feel close to one another and you you use your medium in a beautiful way and still find so much joy and laughter in those moments. Um, You're really the best at it. Well, thank you. That's very, very nice. And I, I I do think, you know, I've, I've really gotten to know my late night colleagues over the, uh, over the past, like over the strike really. And we did a podcast together and I really fond of them and proud to be a member of their group. And I do think that they're, they're all like similarly honest and, um, care about the world. And, uh, I, but I will say that what happened like with my son, Billy, when he had, uh, he was born with, um, you know, with a couple of different heart defects and it just so happened to be at the same time that, certain Repub- most of the Republicans were trying to kill the Affordable Health Care Act, Obamacare. And it just, I don't necessarily believe that things happen for a reason, but it just seemed at that moment as we were sitting in the hospital waiting for the results of his operation, CNN was on and you could see them, them voting. And then ultimately we saw John McCain come out and give a thumbs down and yep. save the whole deal. And, I, you know, it was uh, for me, I always in my life try to figure out and just as a comedian, this is one of the great things about being a comedian is that when something bad happens to you, you know, you're going to get laughs out of recounting it to people. So in a way, 
nothing that bad can happen to you, you know, like, especially when it comes to little stuff, but when it comes to big stuff, I wanted to figure out a way to turn something bad into something good. And it just so happened again that, that this was a time where Congress was making a huge, huge decision, a decision that I don't think most people still understand how it affects them. I think like people have a difficult time distinguishing between their healthcare provider and government healthcare and just how those things relate to each other. And it, that's a shame because we should know more. And I didn't know much about it either until, until I was put in this position. But I do think that at that time I spoke about this and it registered with a lot of people, Democrats and Republicans. And I think that it made it difficult for certain politicians to do what they were planning to do. And I think suddenly it shined a light on, on that situation. And, uh, you know, looking back, I'm, I'm grateful for it because I hear from so many people all the time who say I didn't have health care. I wouldn't have health care. And I'm certainly not taking credit for it. In fact, I think John McCain gets more credit for it than anyone, but, um, they're grateful that I, I talked about it and, uh, I'm really glad I did. And it was a scary time, but something really good came out of it. And, you know, now we have this kid who has no idea that he was in the center of that and who's really just a crazy little six-year-old boy. And um, Oh, my God. I love that he's six. Yeah, he's six, and he's quite a character. You, so, I, I, will, I will never forget that, that monologue. I'll never yeah. forget it as long as I live. It, 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 like, my heart just went like... <sighs> And I like fell in love with you, you know, um, and your your courage in that moment to speak from your heart was what people should be doing all the time. And, I, and again, I, th I think I use the word selfless because it was a moment where you you deserved and had every right to sort of remove yourself for however long you needed. And you chose to, you know, use your platform and your medium in a moment of that was really hard for you and your family to still like share and speak on something really important. That's not a lot of people do it. So. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad he's, he's okay. Right. So he's, yeah, okay. he has to have another open heart surgery. He still has another one um, to come, but uh, the first two are the hardest because the heart is so small, it's harder to operate on. So now he's bigger. We're going to wait until he's uh, until, until it has to happen. We're waiting as long as we possibly can. And then when it happens, we feel really confident that um, that he'll be okay. He will be, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. I've got my big, I've got the big heart around him right now. Just Thank you. I can Thank see you. him right now. He's probably showing his penis um, to his okay. sister right now. That's, so okay, that's, that's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> I have more photos of my six year old whipping his <laughs> out in public than I think of anything else I have in my phone. <laughs> that kid literally will just whip it out whenever. So I, I believe you. It is funny when yeah you realize like oh I could probably get arrested for this <laughs> if someone went through my phone. Yeah, yeah, they're fu yeah they're funny. They're really um they little boys. I mean I I guess I I don't know, my older son was not like this uh, but this one is very delighted with his penis and really wants everyone to see it. Not to I have a daughter. I don't have a daughter so. There's not a lot of Vagini whipping out. Oh. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I won't ever know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's take a hard left. Jimmy, I need you to explain Perry Caravello to me. I have <laughs> had two pod. He's been on an old podcast of mine. I know. Twice. You guys are crazy. And <laughs> what the f I felt like I was on acid. I still don't get it. He just yelled at me for 30 minutes. Explain, please. Years ago, um, some of my friends and I, one of the guys is one of our writers and the other guy is one, our warm-up guy, Don and Tony. Uh, I met these guys like, I don't know, probably 30 years ago. And they knew this guy, comedian named Perry Caravello. And he is a, um, he thinks he's a lot of himself. He's um, a guy who is, who believes he was destined to be like the next, Robert De Niro, and he's. Um, Wait, and I don't we, know what's going on. Do I have to? Like he really this right does. Do, like, does he really believe that? One hundred percent. Yes. Wait, what's his name? So I'm going to Google while you guys are talking. Well, the movie's called Windy City Heat, and it's okay, on I'll, YouTube. I'll it. And um, okay. it was a prank that it was a prank 
in a way. It was also not a prank in some ways because we tricked him into thinking he was the star of a major motion picture and he wound up becoming the star of not a major, but a minor motion picture. And he, there, there are still a lot of very hardcore fans. We had a 20th anniversary screening not so long ago for the movie and uh, Perry came and it was good to see him, but uh, it's very difficult to explain. Um, I, I think the show jury duty probably owes a lot to the movie, Windy city heat. I don't know if you saw um, that, but well, um, of course we saw it. That's my boy, James miles. Man. Yeah. So there's uh there's definitely uh, there are definitely a lot of similarities there. Um, except for in this case, the, um, the subject of the prank is a kind of a lunatic. <laughs> Oh my God, I have to watch this. Okay, wait, I have to tell you this. I just Googled. Other names for him are Scary Perry and yes. Scare Master. Yes, those this are his nicknames. Thing. Oh my Scary God. Scary Perry is- Caravello. A filet of fish, correct? Wait, this might get me Filet-O-Fish off my shaws of sunset. Is what people send him as pranks. Yeah, he does a he does a show on the internet um, that we don't we're not involved with, but yeah, he hates uh, McDonald's filet of fish sandwiches, so People postmates fillet fish sandwiches to him through the whole show. Oh my god, I'm gonna puke. Just that whole... <laughs> and All he right. gets madder and madder and madder each time a delivery comes. I'm sorry. My mom used to eat those, and the like the like the weird part of the fish would get on her fingers, and I would like oh. start to throw up in the car. This is when I was a kid. Don't worry about it. That's a side <laughs> note. Don't worry about it. No offense to fillet fish, but now I just want to vomit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Not oh a fillet, God. by I, the I, way. I, not sure why they call it a fillet. It's uh, really just a square of fish. It's, it's not a, a fillet. No. Yeah. And we don't even know if it's fish. But sorry, McDonald's. <laughs> I guess they're not going to be in our ad sales after this. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to happen. All right. Did you have any comedy idols like growing yeah. up that you like? What got you more into what you're doing? Well, our mutual friend Martin Short is one of them. He is um, SCTV. I think is the greatest comedy sketch comedy show of all time uh, i love all pretty much everyone on that show Catherine o'hara mark short eugene levy rick moranis oh, like the, it's just one of the greatest shows and i always try to if you know teenagers or whatever haven't seen it i i say you must watch sctv you have to watch it. it it's timeless and it really holds up but david letterman was a big one for me yeah. howard stern steve martin um woody allen um, Richard Pryor, um, of course, a lot of people, but Billy Crystal, like, you know, yeah. all the classics. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. It's so wild on that, the SCTV, like, how many were people at the same time when, when Marty was on and he was talking about that group that was all together? Yeah. It was wild. It's, it's crazy. And, crazy. you know, what people think that I always wanted to be a talk show host because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with David Letterman. My license plate on my car said L eight N I T E my um, birthday cake. When I was 16 year old was late night with David Letterman, the cake. My mom bought me a a late night with David. She actually had a Letterman jacket made to look like the late night with David Letterman, Letterman jacket. That's That's awesome. Yeah. And so you're a manifester. Yeah, in a way, I know, somehow that, yeah, in fact, it's interesting because when I interviewed with ABC, which I didn't know was an interview, I thought it was just a meeting. The whole time we talked about old David Letterman shows when I met with the president of the network, Lloyd Braun. And it was kind of funny because afterwards I found out that they were surreptitiously interviewing me for uh, talk shows that I didn't know they were even planning to do. And that's what we talked about the whole time. So in a way, watching that show for so many years, every single night paid off, like specifically, yeah. which is something that doesn't happen that much, which is, you know, I hate to tell you, Christina, is not going to happen with the Shahs of Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> my Persians. Um, They'll learn how to contour, though. Oh my God. Oh, maybe it's, that. Okay. It's literally like, it's sucked me in. Like <laughs> I can't, I'm in a, I'm a, just became a real housewives person. I have never watched the real housewives until two years ago. Not one episode. I've watched every season of every franchise, really? every franchise, Jimmy. Wow. Wow. Till, till now. So now I have to, I had to go on to a different show to, just, are you at Bravo con level um, yes. interest? So yeah. 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 Wow. 
it's yeah. it's yeah. it's got it's gotten real deep. We're gonna do a live um, show from BravoCon next year. That's yeah, that's- because she and I are both Bravo weirdos. Like, look, they gave me they gave me um, Allison and Jamie. Allison's our producer. They gave me a below deck. Um, oh wow, even below deck, huh? Oh yeah, no, big below deck. Listen, wow. if you ever need like some Bravo correspondence for your show, it's you guys cover. Really? No, wow. I know every episode of every show on Bravo. Yeah. By the way, of every franchise of every who's your, on that. Who's your number one favorite, each one of you of Ever? these reality shows? God. Yes. Sonia Morgan. Oh my God. Sonia I, I Morgan. And I don't Luann. know who that is. She is a OG <laughs> New York housewife. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. She is a hot mess. Uh huh. He used to be married to one of the Morgans of the Morgan. No, J.P. Morgan, basically. Oh, the J.P. Morgan Morgans. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. boy. Oh, He's like great. a legit Upper East Side wealthy New York woman who just doesn't give a fuck anymore. And she- oh, she's wild. She'll show she's you her cold. punans. She'll show you her butt. She doesn't care. Really? She's like sixty something. She's but she's crazy. kind. She's not a bitch. No, she's ter- she's, kind, she's lovely. So that's why I like her. Huh? Yeah. We've oh. got. There's a lot of them that I like. I mean, I'm a big, um, I like the Salt Lake City ladies. I know you're, Jimmy's looking at us. It's, no, no, no I, I'm, I'm interested in this. I, you are, know, my, my mother bizarro. watches this and it's very uncharacteristic for my mom to watch any kind of like reality. Like my mother likes like, you know, the good stuff, you know, <laughs> the, like, yeah. the idea that when she told me she was watching Real Housewives, I was like, do I even know you? I, I, how can this be? You know, yeah. and it, she was, but no, I, refu- I wonder I, what it says about me, but you know, I refused for so many years because I was like, everyone's telling me you need to watch. And I was like, no. And then they actually offered me to be on Beverly Hills like 10 years ago. And really? I started laughing. I said, what are you going to yeah. film? <laughs> like me, like sitting here, like not wanting to put on makeup or take a shower. Like it's not going to happen. I don't have long nails. Like none of that is going to happen. So I actually just recently started a little funny thing for just our friends called Real Housewives of Where I Live. I'm not going to say where I live. And it's just like me being like in my room, just <laughs> being stupid. So that's my new thing. <laughs> that's my new thing. The text now. It's just you. So it, it, are there others involved or no, is just it just right you? It's just me right now. I see. Okay. I'll send it to you. Speaking off cameras, if there's others. I see. Yeah. There's no, there's no, <laughs> there are no others. It's, just it's you and an imaginary crew. That's yes. right. <laughs> it is. Support for Messy comes from ZocDoc. We talk about the importance of health on this podcast, obviously all the time. And we know that there's no compromising when it comes to your health. So, you know, if you have that doctor that you go back to that uses your appointment to catch up with the latest headlines or, you know, they're not available, they don't take your insurance, check out ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. You can search by location, availability, and insurance. So literally, there's no compromises here because with ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. I know this all too well because even my like major doctors, they're like, yeah, we might have an appointment in three months. And you're like, kind of important that I see you now. Mm, that's right. So this is your solution. This is your solution. So go to ZocDoc.com slash messy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Mm-hmm. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's right. So ZocDoc.com slash messy. Download the ZocDoc app for free. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash messy. Z-O-C-D-O-C ZocDoc.com slash messy. Also, I have to add kind of my favorite commercials I've ever seen are ZocDoc commercials. They are very crafty. Very good. Before we let you go, Jimmy, two two more things. One, Christine and I, you know, the title of this podcast is Messy because it's just a mess. This is just a conversation we have with lovely people when it's not just us. But You know you're going to get soccer fans tuning in accidentally, right? Yeah, if you call it Messy. Uh, well, oh, well, good. why? Yeah. yeah, because the like most popular soccer player in the world is Messy. Oh, 
<laughs> this couldn't be a good thing. I don't think oh, it's bad. Yeah. Soccer fans. Yeah. Well, it's going to say Christine Applegate and Jamie Lynn Siegler, or Jamie Lynn Siegler and Christine Applegate. I think they're going to know. Yeah, yeah, but you might want to you might want to have fun with it, you know, okay. and just welcome we them in. We have yeah. fun with everything. We talk about fe- we talk about fecal balls, Jimmy. We do. What's fecal? Is that a holiday thing? Fecal balls? <laughs> <laughs> No. Is that like a dingleberry? Is that the medical term for a dingleberry? I no, wish it was you, a dingleberry. Go when ahead. You can't, when you can't, I'm going to say, when you can't shit and you're yeah. going to dig it out of your butt and then oh, yeah. little, little weird ones come down. That's right. I, yes, yes. I know. <laughs> I'm sadly, <laughs> sadly, I know exactly what you mean. Do you have yes. gloves in your bathroom like I do? It, it's, no. it's like you swallowed a rabbit. Yeah. There yeah. you go. And you need to pull yeah. it out of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> If <laughs> like a sack of marbles. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to ask is like, we obviously oh, like, yeah, we don't know how to interview people. Is there <laughs> advice that you can give to us as we continue this podcast for interviewing? Oh, okay. Well, you know what I always find interesting from people because, and I, I've been doing this lately and I hadn't done it beforehand, I would always pe- ask people, like when I speak to the studio audience uh, each night during the commercials, I ask them what they do, where they're from. It's kind of traditional questions. But now I like to ask what their hobbies are because they're much more interested in that than what they do in general. Like most of the jobs aren't so interesting. But if you ask people what their hobbies are, you really get into some stuff and you learn some things about people because like, well, good. Like, uh, can I, may I ask what your hobbies are besides reality television? <laughs> you know what? I don't really have one. And that's We're kind the, of interesting. It's too. my kids. It's everything with my kids. It's youth baseball. Youth baseball rules my life when so I don't, don't, don't forget, anything. Jimmy. We're disabled. So yeah, we don't right, have right. a lot of. Yeah, we can't jog. We can't ski. I wouldn't consider. Yeah. Jogging, yeah, or whatever to be like for me, like drawing is one of my hobbies. You I, know, I would say. love to see some of your drawings. You can send them oh, to I'm me. Drawing and I want you show guys it. right now. Oh, oh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, I, I, um, yeah, no, it's, but it is interesting to find out what people's hobbies are. So maybe that's one of that the things. A, that's great advice. Christina has a party trick, but she's never used it. She used it on us once. What was my party trick? Your five questions. Your are the movies, the movie questions. Oh. Yeah, oh. I won't. I won't make you do this, but oh, okay. or maybe I will. You can if you like. Maybe, maybe. we'll end it with this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I had a party trick when I would go to, you know, I guess the word parties is in the whole thing. Party <laughs> yeah. trick, right? And I would ask someone what their top five favorite movies were. Oh, that's and so hard. And when they would yeah. tell me what they were, I could basically tell you uh your problems with your family your problems with yourself <laughs> your problem with relationships and all sorts of stuff and people would really? get really mad at me because i would hit the nail on the head yeah wow. she got it so right with me wow really yeah and do you, do you think that's oh, so i mean like what if they were all comedies would you then think that was what would you say like if if my top 5 movies are probably all all comedies okay that's how okay. would you re- how would you react to that? Would you have to know specifically which ones I, they are? Yes, I need to know which ones they are. Okay. Um, well, one of them is um, Broadway Danny Rose, a Woody Allen movie. Um, okay. You know, um, transgressions yeah, know. aside, I love that movie. Um, another one is oh wow, this is this is like a real Sophie's Choice time. It's not Sophie's Choice, but this is don't. don't. <laughs> You can't compare <laughs> Sophie's choice to your choices. That's yeah, you're real, right. It's real offensive. Just kidding. You're right. I would say that um oh, this is too this is just much too hard probably um for me to figure out right now. I would have to think about it for a month and then get back to you okay, on it. Then. But well, already but, you know, I you sat in the back of the class but wanted to be in the front of the class and wanted to be more popular than you were. And by doing comedy you got the attention that you somehow didn't get somewhere else. For sure. But you must just have known that because I'm a comedian, right? And not because of that particular movie. Some comedians are different. It's different for everybody. But yeah, I guess comedies. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I'm generalizing. All right. I guess my game sucks. But you're right. No, but yeah, maybe you're just psychic. You ever think maybe it has nothing to do with the movies and you just have a good sense of people? I once told someone and they got really upset. I was like, your daddy didn't love you. 
<laughs> oh no, oh, my God. And this girl started bawling and she goes, How did you know that my dad? Oh no. <laughs> I was like, buy your movies. Yeah. <laughs> what was the movie that really tipped you off to that? Oh, it was something we it was like all like about like every movie had something that there that something was displaced or like there was like a parent that wasn't there, like whatever it was, it would just it felt I just was like. And oh. your daddy didn't love you. Oh, and wow. She started crying. And that's how I know I have a gift. <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> <laughs> your gift is to ruin parties. <laughs> yeah, she, like, I, I like, I like to a clear a room. real party pooper. <laughs> I like to clear a room. That's my jam. <laughs> Do you have a party trick? Um, no, I don't. I don't have like a go-to kind of thing. I just kind of go with the flow. My party trick is trying to get go home. <laughs> so there like, you go. My party trick is looking over at my wife with that kind of look like, huh? Oh and my then god! She, then she'll start dancing, and it's like, oh, forget about it. If the we're dancing too, begins, we're all too old. I mean, like seriously. Well, I can't go anywhere because you know disease. But even when I couldn't, I just oh, I don't want to be out. I want to just be home. Watching yeah, the people. consequences consequences start to outweigh the benefits of of going out and you start going yeah. like okay if i go out on a tuesday i am going to be feeling this i mean it's going to take me until almost sunday to catch back up and yeah, exactly. i definitely think about that stuff sadly i know but you're you work so hard and you do, you do such a service for all of us and we love yeah. you so much and well yeah. you guys are very very nice and um and this is a lot of fun and i'm glad you guys are doing this i'm glad you guys have each other to talk to about this stuff Us yeah too. yeah very me lucky too. You know? yeah we, we adore you and we hope you get some sleep tonight and i don't know we love you and yeah thank maybe- you so much for spending this time with of us of course really anytime you. anytime and if we want to get put really put marty on the spot sometime and make him decide in person on the podcast. Oh, no, it will be, it will be in person. Okay. It will, right. He's going to have to decide like the dog, you know, you're like, come here, doggy. That's come right. Here, doggy. Oh, wow. do that. Yeah. It'll be like a sitcom in the sixties where uh, there's some custody issue. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, before you go, sorry, 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 sorry. I know I mentioned yeah. earlier about, um, I'm fucking Ben Affleck. I just have to oh. say that was the most fun I've had in a night in my life. Like if people don't know what that is, Google it right now. YouTube I, it or whatever people do. For my 40th was, birthday, my um, now ex-girlfriend, Sarah Silverman, made a video. And uh, I have a long-running bit with Matt Damon where I bump him from the show every night. And she made a video called I'm Fucking Matt Damon. It was a confessional. And he was amazing. in it. And it became like, it was really one of the first big viral videos. It became like oh, an yeah. online phenomenon. And I felt I had to respond in some way. And I... What I the way, what I like to do in general, especially in a prank type situation, is respond with like a tremendous amount of force, like with far more firepower than is actually necessary. And, and so, and so we came up with I'm fucking Ben Affleck, and got wound up getting I mean really like every big star in in Hollywood. I think Harrison Ford was the first to commit. He had no <laughs> relation. To any of this, and that Brad Pitt was in. I mean, it was cr- it was just crazy. Cameron Diaz, uh, <laughs> who else did have? Joan Jett. Like, <laughs> I'm standing in this room where they actually recorded "We Are the World," and yeah, it was the all actual of us, studio like, singing it and <laughs> meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf. Oh my god! <laughs> so random. It was Those the most the fun days. day I've ever had. Wow. Yeah, that was a fun one. That was a good one. So it's thank good. you for that. Thank you for including thank me. Thank you. I wasn't on camera very much, but that's okay. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. That was right, fun. Yeah. Right, so well, fun go enjoy you. your family. Give them our love. And uh, yes, love we adore you, guys you so much. And I'm still too. Marty's favorite, but that's okay. We'll- <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. Thanks. Well, he's the fucking best. Yeah. He's a gem. You yeah. know, it's like for people, someone that's successful and he's still such a nice guy and that talented. That was awesome. Thank you so yeah. much for bringing him on. That was great. Yeah, man. Oh, Jesus. My card is a long one and it's tiny words, but it was meant for us to pull. Shall I begin? You ready? Yeah, go for it. Everything that comes to us comes to pass or more accurately for us to pass on. Not just the money in our pocket, 
but wisdom, objects, ideas, even opportunities all come to us so that at the night at the right moment we can pass them on. This is called flow. Being in the flow means being aware that the river of life is flowing to us at every moment. Being in the flow means accepting whatever comes and putting it to good use before passing it on. Going with the flow means allowing whatever comes to move on freely without howling on in any way. If we do not pass on, we are trying to block the flow. And that's where we feel pressure in our life. Pressure is always self-inflicted. Every time you feel under pressure, look at what you need to release and to pass on to someone else. Once you do that, you can relax again. Mm. That's what he does. Yep. That's what he talked about. I was just thinking like, yeah, that's, that was kind of it. That's cool. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. We are, we're, it is. I won't, I don't care what you say, Christina. It is what we're doing here. We are passing on what we're living through. And, and I, I don't have a crystal ball into where it's going, but I, when we're doing this, there's a flow, no doubt. There is a flow. And I was going to say this and I, and you know, this isn't braggadocious, but we went to Stevie Nicks, you know, and I told you guys earlier, but we went to Stevie Nicks the other night and 75 year old woman who's up there fucking flowing, man. Like yeah. who would have known? And she's, she stood up there and she said, this is my home. The forum is my home. I've played her mm-hmm. so much. It's my home. And I looked back around as screaming to 20,000 people screaming for this beautiful woman. Who's a, a friend of ours. And who's so generous and kind and lovely. And she's just, she doesn't let those things happen to her. She just goes. She's like, you know what I'm going to do at 75? A solo tour. Like just things like that. Like it's not about being successful or whatever. She gave, she gave a gift to 20,000 people. And that's, and it was just this, it was so incredible. Anyway, that's, I just wanted to say that because she's major and I love her very much. And she's, yeah. I want her to be my mommy. All right. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Left or right. Right. Rising above thought. When you need to use your mind and particularly when a creative solution is in, is needed, oscillate every few minutes or so between thought and stillness, between mind and no mind. That's creativity. That is. That is. That's a sign to be creative. You need to get that creative flow out of you, girl. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll get there. Someday. Yes, you will. Well, I love you. I love you so much. And, and so it is. It is. Wow. This show is executive produced by Christina Applegate, Jamie Lynn Siegler, and Allison Bresnick. Our audio engineer is Josh Windish. If you want to show us some love, don't forget to leave the show a rating or review. Hi, it's Jamie. Thanks for listening. I just want to let you know, I am a paid spokesperson for Novartis, but this podcast is independent from my collaboration with Novartis.